Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's stand up. Okay, shake off the dust. All right. So we're going to teach you. We've done this song before, but I'm going to teach you a chorus that kind of makes it a little bit more lively, okay? So this is called Rescuer. How many of y'all listen to Ren Collective? Okay, if you're not raising your hand, change that. <laughs> because seriously, it's probably one of my favorite bands because they're so authentic. I love authenticity. But anyway, so here it goes. He's our rescuer. Hey! Everybody ready? Okay. You're going to raise your fist. Say, hey! All right. He's our rescuer. Hey! Woo! He's our rescuer. Hey! We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Hey! Yeah, I think we got it. All right. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. Hey, everybody ready? Let's try it. Let's try it, and then we'll go into the verse. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shame. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion fails. Oh, the good Lord has come to see and say, Here we go. He's our rescuer. Hey. He's our rescuer. Hey. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Hey! Oh, how grace abounds. Hey! We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He is beauty for the blind man, riches for the poor. He is friendship for the one the world ignores. He is passion for the weary. Rest for those who strive. Oh, the good Lord is the way, the truth, and life. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, and life. Here we go. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. We are free We'll praise the Lord, our rescuer. So come and be chainless. Come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption for every affliction. Here at the foot of Calvary. So come and be chained. Let's come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. But there is redemption for every affliction. We're at the foot of Calvary. Let's sing it. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abound. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. Here we go. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. Amen. Hey! 
Well, good morning. Yeah, you may be seated. Hey, good to see everybody. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. A great welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, uh, where we're a family of God just worshiping together, and we're here just to praise Him and encourage one another. So glad you've come. And if you are a guest or a visitor, there's a, we want you to have a bulletin. There's one around the little table in the foyer if you didn't get one. But be sure to uh, tell, tear the little perforated tab apart and then fill it out. And you can either put it in one of the offering boxes in the front or the back uh, or hand it to, to myself or one, one of the elders. We'd love to have a record of your visit and just know more about you. And the and, uh, main thing is we want you to feel a part of the family of God here at Calvary. And that is the way we're taking our offerings is uh, through the offering boxes right here. And one in the back, if you, God leads you to give, you may give at any time during the service, before or after. And uh, we just appreciate your faithfulness and being here this morning. And uh, it's truly a blessing to see so many beginning to return after the pandemic. And, and that's such a blessing to see new faces, the faces that we haven't seen in a long time. And so we just welcome everybody back and praise the Lord for the God, good things that God is doing uh, in our church. Bring your attention to a few things. We did take an Annie Armstrong Easter offering around the Easter season, and the total of that offering was $1,360. So we celebrate that today and thank God for every penny that was given. Amen. Amen. It's such a wonderful victory in our church, and praise God for each one of you gave to that and helped spread the gospel across the United States. Uh, also, we have a foster care info meeting, and uh, we're going to be highlighting that, especially in the month of May and even some today. Uh, just the incredible need that there is in the foster care uh, uh, environment, that there's a great shortage of foster homes. And so we're going to be praying about that and looking into that. And there's a, an info meeting at the Isaiah Closet. Josh and Casey started the Isaiah Closet several years ago. It's an incredible ministry right on the square. And so uh, if you want to know more about that, you can contact Casey. She'll be happy to talk with you about it. Her number's in the bulletin. And uh, so we'll be looking more and more at that in the coming uh, days and weeks and months ahead. Uh, also, the youth are going to be getting together and going to Hay Day. Hey, there it is again. In Denison, May the 15th, uh, leaving at 1030 uh, a.m. So that'd be a great time. We've got camps coming up in the summer. Be sure to make yourself aware. I've got this uh, flyer here, Lake Levon Preteen Camp, June 25th through 28th. Sign up in the foyer right out there. The speaker is Andre Sampson. Uh, then we'll have some great worship. Fireworks, there's lots of great things. Cost is $188 per person. And we have had uh, one fundraiser, probably has some more to go. But don't ever let money keep you from uh, sending your child to camp or your youth to camp because we always want to step in and help and, and uh, make sure that money is not the obstacle there. So preteen youth camp coming up. Youth is uh, July 7th to 11th. And as well, men's conference, women's conference is coming up in July. Be sure to sign, in, uh, sign up and plug in to those uh, ministries as well. Just a lot of great things that are going on in the life of our church. God is truly blessing our Celebrate Recovery ministry on Thursday nights. Uh, we meet at 6 o'clock for a meal and have a large group at 6.30. And, and that's really for anybody who has a hurt, hang-up, or habit, which uh, I really don't know anybody that doesn't have one of those, but God can really... Uh, bless your heart and give you freedom. Break your chains. So we're always talking about the chain breaker uh, here in our church, that Jesus is the one who can truly break any chain in our life. Even that last song we sang, so come and be chainless, you know, that we can truly be free in Christ. And so we want to invite you to uh, come and be a part of our Celebrate Recovery ministry on Thursday nights as well. And so at this time, we're going to kind of put aside those things and uh, focus on the Lord, and Josh is going to come and give us our call to worship this morning. God has brought something to my attention. <clears throat> As um, a previous foster, uh, foster dad, uh, but also, more importantly, a saint found in Jesus We've been reading through uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, and I'm going to highlight something that hasn't been highlighted yet that God really brought to my attention. Uh, this is um, 17 through 21. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And this is from God, who gave us, uh, who gave us uh, through Christ, uh, who through Christ reconciled us to him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, 
not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us with the, uh, with the message of reconciliation. Therefore, uh, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sake he made us to be sin, or he who made him to be no sin, who knew no sin, that we might become right, the righteousness of God. Now, I was journaling one time, and one of the questions um, out of our quarterly in the, in the youth was, um, what does this t- passage tell us about God, specifically? What, what does this passage tell us about God, and then what does this passage tell us about our identity? So specifically, I put, a, put away all the 4-on-1 training that, that we had done, whoop, 4-on-1 training that we had done, and um, I just started naming all the stuff that talked about our identity. So the first thing it says, it says we are a new creation. Old has passed away, the, the new has come. This is from God who, through Christ, reconciled us to himself, so we are reconciled to Christ. We are, we are found in Christ, and it gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Do y'all realize that if you are found in Christ, if you're a new creation in Christ, you are now a minister of reconciliation. So you are that bridge. You, and, and the Bible specifically talks about being a co-laborer with Christ. We have that beautiful ministry of co-laboring with Christ. Those who are lost in darkness, we can, through Christ, through our relationship with Christ, minister to them about reconciliation. And then after, it was probably about an hour after I read that passage and prayed about that, that my wife sent me an article that completely floored me. There were, at one point, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, there were 186 children in foster care sleeping in offices of CPS offices. That's the most I'd ever heard of. I mean, at the most, across Texas, I'd, I'd heard maybe 30, 40, something like that. 186 children. And I, I began to do some research. I'm like, okay, so wh- why, why is this? Through COVID, a lot of foster homes shut their doors. And there, there has been a massive short of, shortage of foster homes. And through that, we're seeing children without that village rallying around them. So this next month is actually Foster Care Awareness Month uh, in May. So we're putting together some, some really good information for you guys and for our county, but specifically, we're gonna start with this church. This is one area of ministry that um, I don't take lightly, neither does my wife, but it's been taken lightly in the church because here's the thing, if, if the church was truly and authentically doing its job, there would be no kids in care. First off, I I think the statistic that I shared one time whenever I was preaching over this, if one out of every three churches, if one family from that one out of every three churches adopted one kid, there would be no more kids in, in, in care. Guys, we as saints, as ministers of reconciliation, need to wake up. We need to see this is a problem. So, a couple of things. Um, on your tab, we've, we've added a couple of things. One thing that I want to bring to your attention is life groups. Life groups is coming in, uh, in the coming months. If you bring out this tab right here, everybody get their bulletin. Everybody get their bulletin. If you don't have one, grab one on the way out. On the tab, it says, I want to be plugged in. We are not here to be pew sitters. We are not here to stare at a screen. We're not here to look at a guy playing a guitar. We're, we're here to serve. I want to get plugged in. And it has all of these areas to get plugged in too. Children's ministry, youth ministry, missions, all these different things. And then down at the very bottom, there's life groups. If you want to get plugged into life groups, that's going to be something that's a really easy way to plug in your non-church going friends that might not come to church, but they can go to somebody's house and eat some food. Amen? All right, so life groups, and then there's foster care ministry. That is something that we, in the coming months, in the coming years, are going to take ownership of in the the county. So 
if you want to get plugged into a foster care ministry, if you uh, want more info about that, fill out your name, phone number, and circle that and put it in the offering box. And we can be sure to uh, get you the info that you need. Be praying about this, please. We are family. I love, I love that we classify each other as family members. And guys, there are, there are people hurting right now. Not just the kids in care, but the, the parents that lost their child. I mean, they're, 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 they're caught up in some sort of chain, some sort of sin that we can, be, we can help be the ministry minister of reconciliation in this time. So be praying about what this means to your family. Be praying about this, what this means to you. Be praying about what God wants you specifically to do about it because I'm only one person. I am very limited in what I can do. But as a church, as the body of Christ, we can really shake the earth. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you for the opportunity to co-labor with you. We praise you so very much for this ministry of reconciliation that you have given to us, God. Lord, I pray that we would just realize that we are saints. We are not pew-sitters. We are not churchgoers. We are saints that, is, that are found in you. God, if there's somebody who's not found in you, Father, I pray that you would wake them up this morning. Lord, let us worship you, Father, because you're the reason we're here. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen.
this for my guitar, okay? Don't you love it when stuff like this happens? Everybody hear that? Maybe, maybe not. Turn it up just a little bit. Lord Jesus God, as we continue worshiping you, Father, as we continue worshiping what you've done for us, Father, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would take hold that you would renew our mindset for you. Lord, we love you.
that you would just please help us to resonate in that fact. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and honor you in every way. In your name I pray, amen. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Good to see each and every one of you this morning. Psalm chapter 33, if you please take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 33, by the way, it's not Psalms with S, it's Psalm. 33, Psalm is basically, Psalm, the book of Psalm is a hymn book. It's basically a book of of praises uh, that would be used in in just leading in worship like we've just seen. So what an incredible book. And uh, God has led me to preach a series of sermons uh, related to our emotions Uh, emotions are very much a part of who we are God gives us these emotions that we all have Um, and we all have negative emotions as well and uh, God allows those into our lives basically as a warning light to help us know that something's kind of gone off track and so if you're having some negative emotions this morning maybe like fear worry anxiety depression these kinds of things Uh, These are warning lights that help us to know that we need to to change courses, that we need to draw near, be near to God. And uh, so uh, we're going to be looking at various psalms, uh, various chapters within the book of Psalms that really deal with these various emotions, and uh, we're going to let God teach us about these things. I do want to, on the outset say to you that this does not mean that I'm going to start preaching about our felt needs uh, because a lot of times we can kind of get off track when we just kind of focus on our felt needs rather than the Word of God. So my, my commitment to you in preaching the Word of God in these series of sermons as well as all the rest of the time is to basically make sure that all of our sermons are about God, about who He is and not what we feel necessarily. Um, that this, these are not going to be about us and our felt needs. Uh, also, may all my sermons always be completely biblical, okay? Biblically based. So we're going to be looking at what the, what the Word of God has to say to us about our emotions. If I could rename this sermon, God was really talking to me the last few days about this. So I want to make sure we don't go down that direction of felt needs If I could rename this sermon, I would name it the God of Deep Abiding Joy because we're going to be talking about God uh, and how He can help us with all of our emotions that He has given us. So I'm not going to be consulting any psychology books or psychiatry books uh, about all this. We're going to be looking solely into the Word of God and our our goal is always that we would all grow spiritually uh, and, and closer to Him as we look at His Word. Uh, in this particular psalm, Psalm 33, is basically a song of joy. It's a call to worship. 
It's uh, basically a call to worship. To, you know, as people would assemble in celebration, they would sing this particular psalm, and it's it's uh, uh, mostly about worshiping God, who is a God of joy. Our God is a God of joy, and in fact, in the very beginning, in Psalm 33, we began to read there in verse one. It says, "Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Have joy in the Lord." That we're called to do this. For praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings or six strings as well. Uh, Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. There it is again. The shout of joy. That that's another way to praise God. We can praise him with our music, which was just done. Music is is a beautiful way to praise God. That's primarily the reason God has given us music is so that we might be a vehicle of praise. But it's not the only way we can praise Him. We can praise Him with shouts of joy. We can shout. I wonder when the last time somebody truly shouted in Calvary Baptist Church. Would you shout? Uh, You know, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. It's okay. Amen. Yeah, we're going to shout this morning. Shout of joy. And uh, so there's, there's a tone of joy here. And for the word of the Lord in verse 4 is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth, He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help. And our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. This precious psalm is going to teach us this morning uh, how we can all live in deep, abiding joy. That as we live a life of worship and truly focusing upon him, we can experience this deep abiding joy you know joy is such a precious god-given emotion and i just wonder this morning uh, if you, as you look inside your own heart are you living a life filled with joy jesus said that he has spoken these things to us that his joy jesus said that my joy may remain in you that your joy may be full, John 15, 11. 1 Peter 1, 8 says that if you believe in him and are f- filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. In fact, James 1, 2, and 3 says, count it all joy, pure joy, when you encounter various trials. So even during the trials and the difficulties and the crises, the tragedies, all these hard times of life, the Bible still says that we can count it all joy. So this joy is different than happiness. Happiness depends on what happens to you, all right? If something good happens to you, you get a check in the mail, you're going to be happy. When it's all gone, you'll be sad. You know, happiness goes up and down with the circumstances of life. Joy doesn't, though. True joy is abiding, and it's deep, and it's, it's there through everything, through all the ups and downs in life, We can live in this full joy. And this psalm starts out talking about how we're supposed to rejoice in the Lord and praise Him with this music and play skillfully with a shout of joy. 
And so Psalms 33 is going to teach us some things. I want you to open your mind and your heart. Keep your Bible open. We're going to walk through the psalm together. And first of all, we see in verses 4 through 9 that we, we really can't experience God's deep abiding joy by considering God's work in the past. As we read through these verses in verses 4 through 9, we, it talks a lot about the word of the Lord and all that he has done. It talks about his righteousness and his justice and And it really emphasizes God's voice, that even as he speaks, it talks about the creation of the world. You know, God spoke, and the heavens appeared. Imagine this. God spoke, and he he just created all that we see around us in this beautiful spring on this glorious, sunshine-filled spring morning that he created all this with his spoken word. And think of how powerful God is and, and how he can speak into your life This morning, the same uh, sunshine and the same joy that's in the creation, he can speak it directly into your heart. That God spoke and he parted the Red Sea. And he caused all these miracles to happen by his spoken word. And so we we find in here the, the, the word of the Lord reveals his work in the past. And so we see that God has been 100% faithful. Amen. He's been 100%. He's never failed that he has promised and proven his love for us, that he has proven his absolute power in all of the creation and all the miracles that he's done. And what the psalmist is see is that what the psalmist is saying is that we can look back in the past and see how mighty, how powerful, how faithful, how wonderful God has been throughout history. And it can bring joy to our lives to know that we serve that same God this morning. Isn't that good news? That, that you can just look back. And we're not called to, to live in the past. I'm not saying that. But it is important to remember. God's Word continually reminds us how important it is for all of us to remember. In fact, that's the whole essence of communion is, is remembering what Jesus has done for us. That was the essence of Passover. The people of Israel would experience Joy as they remembered how God delivered them in the past. And so our memories. Every Easter we look back and we remember that Jesus rose again. And we realize that every Sunday we do that. And we come on this first day of the week, the first rattle out of the box for this week. We come together because we remember how good God has been and that he has risen from the dead. The fact is, the Lord knows how prone we are to forget. And we do forget, don't we? We, A lot of times we fuss at the Israelites in the Old Testament, and we scratch our heads and say, how can they be so stupid? You know, they they keep forgetting how good God's been. They keep diving off and getting off track and doing crazy things. And and all the while, you know, God looks at us and like, don't don't you see yourself in that? And, And we all tend to forget God's goodness and not be mindful of what he has done especially during trials and crisis when something really blindsides us and hits us and we're caught off guard a lot of times we just panic and we forget everything that we've learned about God and the calling here is no run to God draw near to him during those times and and find deep abiding joy even when you're in the midst of those trials as they come crashing in, as your world comes crashing in upon you, you remember to keep your focus and remember all that God has done. The secret of joy is to take our focus off of our circumstances and ourselves and put it firmly on God and His goodness. Amen? To just lift our eyes, you know, and how, how many times, maybe this week, you've just been really focusing on the circumstances of your life and And as you do that, it draws you in a downward spiral, and it just sucks the joy right out of your life. But when we look at what he's done in the past, we're able to trust him for today and for the future. So God's been good on all these promises, and he's been so powerful and so wonderful in the past. That's good enough for today, and it's good enough for the future. This morning, I was... uh, Reading the first 15, I don't know how many of you still do that or not. First 15 is a really powerful devotional. That's the name of the website, first15.org. Uh, and it's really, really meaningful every day. And this morning it just grabbed hold of me. as It, it quoted Psalm 37 
about how he should dwell on the land and do good and then feed on his faithfulness. I think the actual uh, version that they used said befriend faithfulness, but the essence of the, the Hebrew word there is to feed on God's faithfulness. Probably on the next page of your Bible, Psalm 37. Put your eyes on it. Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. That's the New King James Version. Munch on. I know y'all like to munch. I've seen you. I know y'all like to eat. We're foodies. Imagine feeding on his faithfulness and chomping down on it like it's a T-bone steak, man. It's like the faithfulness of God throughout all the generations. Feed on that for a minute. Let that feed your soul. And it will feed you with joy. That it will bring joy as you consider God's faithfulness in your life. Number two, we can also experience God's deep abiding joy by realizing God's plan for the present. Right now, today. Now, this draws from verses 10 through 12. And it first gives two negative examples. The first negative example is the council of the nations. Need I say more? Look at the plans of the federal government these days. And, uh, you know, what kind of sense does that make? The things that, that are going on in the federal government. So many foolish things to consider. So many things that are directly contrary to God's word. As well as what is good for the people of this country. That there, we can't look for the... In fact, this, by, this verse actually says that, that the Lord brings those plans of the nations to nothing. He makes it all for naught. So that's one negative example. And, the, and then, by the way, in, in that context, verse 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord... The people has chosen as his own inheritance. Now, that's primarily, the primarily thrust of this verse is about Israel, God's people, the one he has chosen as his own inheritance. But it also, the, the, the truth that a nation that truly honors God and trusts in God as the Lord, that he will bring his blessings upon it. And we can see in the condition of our nation what happens when you take your eyes off the Lord. And when you walk away from God's word, we can see all of the confusion and all of the rioting and the hatred and the anger. You just think of all that's going on in our nation right now, and it's because we have walked away from God's word as a nation. We want to find joy in our nation again. Blessed is the nation who is God is the Lord. God's not going to bless the direction of our land today. He lifts his protection from those who would walk outside as well. Maybe today you've come to this place and you realize you're, you're not living for the Lord and you're far away from him and you know that, that you're living in direct obedience to God and what, what happens is, is we lose God's protection. We lose God's blessing. That if we want his blessing, we have to move back in under his umbrella uh, of, of obedience and we begin to walk with him and, and we begin to live for him and honor him with our lives then we receive God's blessing and so we move on the plans of the people in the next verse it says uh, or excuse me verse 10 he makes the plans of the people no effect not only the council of the nations but the plans of the people our own plans are short-sighted our own plans miss the mark when we don't consider God. Reminds me of the old bunker, uh, bumper sticker that says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> you know? And we think that we have things all planned out, right? Our plans are of no effect here. Our plans, it says here, have no effect. When we choose to ignore, reject God's plans, his word, his ways, it only leads to misery it only leads to failure. Our way is, is to destruction. Our way ends in death. So you want to keep trying things your way? There's an old song. I did it my way. Remember that song? I did it my way. 
Maybe you're here this morning thinking, yeah, I'm doing it my way. And I just want to ask you, how's that working out for you? Our plans are no good. They're of no effect. But instead, it gives us the, the, the answer. It says in verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. So what we begin to understand here is that his plans are eternal and redemptive and extend to all generations. And his counsel is revealed in his word. Verse 4, his word is right. His word is truth. Verse 5, his word is powerful. The heavens were made. And we read just a moment ago. He gathered the waters, the Red Sea, and he parted the Red Sea. That his word we see here, as they spoke, and the, the power of it, and the beauty, the majesty of it, the wisdom of it, his word. And so what we're talking about is saying, God, I want to chuck all my plans, and I want your plan. And there's joy in that. The greatest joy of your life will be to find out God's plan for your life, and then go about that wholeheartedly with everything you've got. Amen? That's the greatest joy of life. God's Word. I was telling somebody the other day, there used to be a bumper sticker. This is years ago. It said, it said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Somebody come along later, and they made another bumper sticker, and it said, God said it, and it crossed out, I believe it. That settles it. God said it. That settles it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Amen? It only matters what matters what he says. And his plans here, we're talking about seeking God through his word and, and figuring out God's plan for our lives. And I love this. this. This brought me so much joy this week. As we begin to see in verse 15, he fashions their heart individually. I love that. We're going to get to it in just a moment. But listen, I want everybody to look at me now. What we're learning here from God's Word is there's no greater joy that we can have than being right in the center of God's will for our lives. That's where you need to be. And I want to tell you this morning that whatever you need to do to get there, do it so that you can be in the center of His will in my own life. I look back on my life and the times that I've gotten down or depressed or anxious, I could always trace it back to my neglect of God's Word. That if I wasn't really in His Word, then I just tend to get off track in my thoughts. My attitudes begin to get off track and, and then I start doing stupid stuff and start thinking wrong. My thinking's not right. And it's all because I have drifted from God's Word. So this morning, realizing God's plan for the present, and the way you know God's plan is by mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. And so that word mercy there is the Hebrew word hesed, okay? Now, in, in us Americans, we say hesed, but the Hebrew, they say, it's kind of got, you know, like a, you know, hesed, okay? Uh, Say it with me. I want to see you say that, all right? Chesed, okay? It's a chesed. It is a critical, important, important, important Hebrew word. And it is translated, get this, mercy, grace, loving kindness, different words in different contexts. Mercy, grace, loving kindness, faithfulness. It's even translated compassion occasionally. And it gets confusing because you start thinking, what does this word actually mean? Does it mean all these things? Well, the problem is, is that this word is not primarily an emotion or a feeling. But it involves action on behalf of someone who is in need. So we have this definition, and I want you to mark down in your listening guide. This is a good definition of the word chesed. <laughs> I love that. And it is love and loyalty that inspires merciful and compassionate behavior toward another person okay so what it's saying is God loves you in that way that he ha he he loves you he has this emotion he loves you so much he sent his one and only son to die for you 
He's loyal to you. He is committed to you. And because of that, he has this compassionate behavior toward you. Okay? And by the way, we're, we're called to have that same kind of love toward other people. That's the difference between love, just an emotion, an you know, ooey-gooey feeling inside that we have, a romantic love. But hesed means that I love you so deeply and I'm completely committed to you, I'm loyal to you, and therefore it's going to lead me to, have, to behave, take action for you. God has demonstrated his love toward you. And that while you were still sinners, Christ died for you. So this is the kind of love that God has for you. Is not only that he says that he loves you, but he has proved, proven his love toward you. Isn't that good news? And what I'm saying is, is this morning as we read this psalm, that if you would just bask in that, if you would just realize completely how much God loves you and how much he has proven his love toward you, that it will bring you this deep abiding joy. In other words, God's not going anywhere. Other people may leave you, and you may lose your job. You may lose your home. Your car may burn up. All these things. But God's always going to be there because he loves you and he's committed to you. And it's not like an obligation kind of commitment. We say, well, he's just sticking around because he's obligated. It's not an obligation, but it's based on this real deep love that he has for you. In fact, he loves you so much. In verse 18, his eye is always on you. I love that, the visual of God's eye. The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. And then 2 Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself Strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. God's watching over you because he loves you. He's committed to you. In fact, it's very well possible that he's more committed to you than you're committed to yourself. And in that context, I mentioned the verse a while ago, but I want to bring it back into play in verse 15. He fashions our hearts individually. I did a little deep dive on the word fashion there. I knew there was something there, and there was. The, the, the verb there, it means to form, okay? And that's good. He's forming you. But the noun, it's the same word, can also be a noun, and it's translated potter. You get the full picture now? Imagine a potter has a lump of clay here, and he's molding, and and like I, I referred to one preacher one time, mashing out the lumps, we all got the lumps, right? And he's, he's forming, he's molding, he's shaping you. That's how much he loves you. That's how committed he is to you. If you will let him have his way and you'll seek him in his word and, and his plan for your life, he will just continue to mold you and shape you, fashion you individually. Don't miss that on that part. That God has a specific form for your life. I love that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So what I'm trying to say to you here, open your heart to this. If you will let him form you, if you'll say, God, I'm putting aside all of my own plans, all of my own ambitions, my own ideas. I'm putting aside everything else, and I'm going to let you begin to really shape me and form me. I'm here today to tell you that is the greatest joy that can ever come to your life, is to know that you're being fashioned by him individually. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you excited about that? That... He is, and he's doing this with a heart of love. He loves you like no one else could ever love you. He loves you more than you love yourself. And the message here is to realize his love, to bask in his love, to saturate yourself in his love, receive his love. Many of you don't feel like you're worthy of that love, and none of us are worthy of it. It's only by his mercy and only by his grace that he loves us. And then the next part is, love him back. 
What is the first commandment? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And folks, the, the summation of all of this is that if you'll do that, that's the first button we talk about so many times. If you'll do that, then out of that will come this deep abiding joy. Love him with, a lot of times we leave out the word all. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. You want to know if you're really loving him with all your soul, mind, and strength? Look at your checkbook. Look at your schedule this past week. And really see how much time you've spent with him. How many, much of your resources you've given back to him. Talk about finding joy. This, this, that first verse in Psalm 33, rejoice in the Lord. Oh, you righteous. comes back to that in verse 21. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because, here it is, we have trusted in your name. Pretty much always all comes back to faith, doesn't it? What about you? Are you trusting in God? I mean, really. Are you really walking by faith? Habakkuk 2.4. Everybody in this room, I challenge you to remember Habakkuk 2.4. It's cornerstone for your Christian faith. Three words. Walk by faith. Boil it all down. Make it simple. Bring it home. Walk by faith. Whatever you're facing, health problems, financial, you know, we, we go through all these things in life that are so hard. We know that life can be so challenging and, and we can go through such horrible seasons of life, but we, we, we need to all realize that, that through all those things we learn to walk by faith and then as we have this heart that is totally trusting in Him, then we'll be able to rejoice. It comes back to bringing you that full joy. Am I supposed to walk by faith so I'll have the pure joy? Am I supposed to worship so I'll have this pure joy. No, that's getting it all wrong. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be God first. We love Him. We trust Him. We, we desire to, to know Him. We desire Him to fashion our hearts individually. It's all about Him, but the byproduct is this deep abiding joy. And you know what? As, we, as self-centered Americans, what we want to do is say, no, I want the joy. But we don't want to do the other thing. See what I'm saying? We get it backwards. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these other things will be added unto you as well, including joy and all these emotions, you know. And listen, one of the key problems in the United States of America is mental health. Mental health is at the center of so many of you know, the mass shootings that we've seen. It almost always comes back to mental health. Somebody has, has lost their mental health. And I'm not saying that, that uh, faith, you know, sometimes we do need medicine. I will say that. But folks, we need to walk by faith. Trust in Him. Would you stand with me? We're going to have a moment of invitation. Even this invitation really isn't for you. It's for God. We want to honor Him. We want to please Him. We want to uh, tell Him how much we love Him. And so let's... let's Put our hearts in that mode right now. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we do want to ask you, what do you want us to do? As we talked about last Sunday, we're finding out who we are. And as we find out who we are, God, you revealed to us what you want us to do. But I pray that you'd help give us a heart of obedience. And in these moments, God, maybe there's somebody in here that's really gotten off track and, and uh, let you get out of first place. And... Lord, I pray that you would just draw people today. That person who's sitting there and says, you know what, I'm not sure I really even know who God is. I'm not sure I've really ever been born again. May you draw that person to yourself. Maybe there's another one who say, I know you, Lord, but I've just gotten out of your will and out of your way. And, and today would just be a day ready to recommit their lives to you. Some others need a church home, a church family. and Lord, may you draw them as well. God, help us today in these moments as we sing this song. As we said a moment ago, to do whatever it takes to get right in the center of your will. 
Help us to do that right now. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to come. As we sing this song, you act, you do what you know you need to do. continue to be faithful. I want to invite you to say a word about Wednesday nights. Uh, this particular Wednesday night is our time where we have men's and women's studies. Uh, so all the way from youth up, men and uh, young men and, and ladies and young ladies are going to meet together for, for studies and just coming together in God's Word in, in, in that setting. So come, be a part of it on Wednesday nights. It's part of discipleship, uh, growing in Christ, uh, connecting in a deeper way. So I invite you to be a part of that. 6.30 on Wednesday nights and be a blessing to your heart. Uh, let's join our hearts together in prayer and close in this day of worship. Brother Ronnie, would you lead us in our final prayer? Lord, we are just so thankful that you have invited us into your house today. That we have been in your presence May we continue in your presence, Lord. May we continue to seek your holiness. May we continue to seek your kingdom, Lord. And may we continue to find that joy that we find by being in your presence and being in your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that you will walk with us daily, that your spirit would guide us, that we would make wise decisions that would draw others to know you. Lord, may we be good stewards of the word that you've given us. May we be good stewards of the, the blessings that you have given us. We praise you. We honor you. We, we know, Lord, that you have created all things, and all things you have created are good. In 
In Jesus' name we praise. Amen.